we feel that by understanding the financial why of our clients, it's going to allow us to have much deeper, much more richer relationships so that our clients can feel and understand exactly and truly what we're doing for them. Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. Welcome to the very first episode of the Succession Podcast, where our goal is to pay success forward. This podcast is brought to you by Mavenbridge Capital, which is a private wealth management company. And my name is Christopher Fu, and I will be your host throughout our entire journey together. To start off, first of all, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know you all have busy lives and busy schedules, so again, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, whether you are taking care of the baby right now, or at the gym, or maybe on your commute to work. Thank you guys so much. As you guys were probably scrolling to find another podcast to add to your great podcast list, hopefully you guys will enjoy this. Maybe it was the cover art that attracted you, or maybe it was a name. I'm sure some of you guys, when looking at the name, was probably thinking, hmm, this guy needs to learn some spell check. He spelled succession wrong. I'm going to see what this is about. Uh, but in fact, I'm actually one of those weirdos where I like to take multiple words and, and join them together and see what new kind of quirky word I can come up with. So succession is a word I made up, and actually it is composed of success plus connection, hence succession. So there you have it. I love connecting with people and I love sitting down with people and having really deep conversations, really just to get to know them and their story and, and sharing a little bit of my story and, and just having that mutual connection. So my goal for this podcast is to be able to just sit down with very special, very unique individuals, successful uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, company leaders, individuals who have found success in their life, and have them share that success. But as we all know, oftentimes finding that success doesn't come without its share of hardships. So the goal is also to hear about what those hardships were and what hurdles they had to overcome. And my hope is that with our conversations and the collaborations that I have with these individuals, that we can come up with valuable information, advice, life tips that hopefully we can pass on to you guys and you guys will be able to take that information and use it and apply it to your own life and hopefully find success as well. Now, if you guys don't know by now, this podcast is going to be focused on success. Now, I think we all have various definitions of what success is. For me personally, I don't define success as having the big house a nice fancy car or a nice wristwatch or money in the bank account. Those things, of course, are great and nice, but they're more importantly the results of the hard work that you put in. But I don't define it as success. One of the individuals that I admire and I follow him a lot and listen to his podcast, Jay Shetty, he recently spoke on one of his episodes uh, briefly about success as well. And I love it because he said that we view success typically through two different lenses. The first lens that people can view success through is through a lens of envy. The second lens is through a lens of study. Now, what he meant by that was through the lens of envy, for example, you might be on Instagram or TikTok, right? And scrolling through newsreels and stories on hours on end. And you might be seeing individuals and wondering, man, they got the perfect life, right? They're going on fantastic vacations. They're driving nice cars. They have perfect teeth, perfect skin. Why do they have to be so perfect? But that's not success, right? When we view it that way, we're viewing it through that envious lens and we get jealous and we're trying to compare our life to them and it doesn't do anything for us. And I don't like using that envious lens, but I think people do tend to use it a lot too often. That's why I prefer looking at it through a lens of study. Through a lens of study, what you do is you essentially look at that same individual and see to yourself, 
well, how can I emulate that? What steps did they take in order to reach that level of success to be able to travel or have those nice cars? Obviously, it didn't come from most people out of nowhere. Most people have to work hard for that. So how can I study and how can I learn and apply that to my own life? So through the lens of study, we're really trying to see how can we become healthier individuals, wealthier individuals, and more wiser individuals. And I think that's very, very important. And that's the goal of my podcast is to be able to pass on valuable information through the conversations that I'm going to have with individuals and have this be a podcast of study for you guys and give that valuable information to you guys so that you can apply it to your own life. Now, I think what's even more important is that once you find that success, once you can attain it, it's what do you do with it? As I mentioned before, the goal of this podcast is to pay success forward. And I view that once you reach that level of success, how do you use that to pass it down to others? How do you inspire others so that they can use it and pass it on to other people? And that just brings me to one of the other individuals who was really my hero growing up, and that's Kobe Bryant. I just remember that at the age of, when I was 14, I was a teenager, when I first saw Kobe play, for my favorite team, the Lakers, I just knew that this guy was going to be special. Everyone was calling him the next Jordan. He was just a great, very special, unique player. And he infected us with his mama mentality, which was just amazing to see and just amazing to witness that high level of focus that just could not be broken no matter what. He was always in the moment. And that was just an amazing thing to be able to witness and to be a part of. But what I love even more so about Kobe was that he wasn't just trying to be great for himself. He wanted to be great and inspire other people with that greatness so that they can find their own greatness. I'm a quote guy, and one of the quotes that I love comes from him when he said that, The most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great at whatever they want to do. Kobe is one of the many people who have inspired me throughout my life. And my hope for this show is that hopefully I can inspire at least one of you guys and help you find your own success so that when you get there, you can then pay it forward and pass it on to the next individual who needs help in finding it as well. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this show, this podcast is going to be brought to you by Mavenbridge Capital, which is a private wealth management firm. I'm sure You guys might be wondering, well, who the heck is Mavenbridge Capital? Well, Mavenbridge Capital is a wealth management company that I founded back in February of 2021. Uh, I am the CEO of the firm and a wealth manager. I am a CFP or Certified Financial Planner Practitioner, as well as a CPWA or Certified Private Wealth Advisor Practitioner. I've been in the financial services industry for a little over 15 years, and I just absolutely love what I get to do each and every day. Prior to founding Mavenbridge Capital, I had worked as a financial advisor for a large firm for about 13 and a half years before I decided to make a big life change. Now at Mavenbridge Capital, we have a few different focuses on how we help individuals. We work very closely with business owners who are making a big transition into retirement. These business owners have dedicated their life to their business and to say that they're now going to retire and do something maybe probably completely different is a huge transition, not just financially, but emotionally. So Our goal at Mavenbridge Capital is to help those business owners with every aspect of that transition, making sure that their finances and their plans are in place so that they can enjoy the next phase in their life. Now, we also work closely with early stage business owners. These are individuals or businesses that are a few years into their business. And then essentially, they're putting in that sweat equity, putting everything, all the effort back into the business to make sure that it prospers for many years to come. But oftentimes, we find that with that intense focus, sometimes a lot of things get left out of the loop. Maybe making sure that your business is properly protected or that your personal uh, finances don't get lost in the shuffle. So as advisors, we try to help balance out that act of personal business and making sure that the hard work that you're putting into the business is also being protected at the same time. 
Besides business owners who are transitioning into retirement and early stage business owners, we also focus a lot on helping our high net worth families going through different life transitions, such as retirement, job changes, inheritance, or estate transitions. There was a quote, I don't remember where I heard it from, but it's so true. When life changes, money changes. And when money changes, life changes. Going through these life transitions is not just a financial stressor, but it's also a very emotional stressor as well, too. So oftentimes, a lot of my clients say to me, wow, you're also like a financial therapist, which I think most financial advisors out there would say the same thing, that we all also feel like sometimes we're therapists because, you know, we do walk our clients through these very emotional changes. I mean, they're emotional for us. So we as practitioners always want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and doing the best thing that we possibly can for each and every one of our clients. With that being said, one of the main tenets we have at Mavenbridge Capital is that we strongly believe if we can understand our customers, what we call financial why, then we'll be better equipped to understand them on just so many other levels and not just a goal-oriented level. And what I mean by that is typically you might have an advisor ask, well, what are your financial goals? And we all have goals, but our job is to go above and beyond that and also understand them on a emotional level and also a behavioral level. And we feel that by understanding the financial why of our clients, it's going to allow us to have much deeper, much more richer relationships so that our clients can feel and understand exactly and truly what we're doing for them. So what is financial why? This term has been around for a while. It's not something that I coined or invented. For me, when I think about financial why, I assimilate it very closely to a book that I absolutely love, which was written by Simon Sinek called Start With Why. And basically the premise between asking yourself why or understanding your financial why is to understand the reason behind the things and the actions that we put ourselves through, our motivations. Why do we get up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning to go to the gym or to make that hour commute to get to work, to open up the business early, whatever it may be, it's our reason behind the things that we do. And I believe with when it comes to financial why, it could be personally motivated, it could be financially motivated, or it can be uh, charitably motivated. For example, the financial why could be Something as simple as wanting to make sure that you secure a legacy for your family you know, that's going to last for many generations to come. Or it could just be sure that you have the financial assurance that your loved ones are going to be taken care of in the event that you should pass unexpectedly. Or it could be even something where what you do, you know it will help others and have a positive difference in their lives. I truly believe that in understanding our clients' financial why, it helps us be much more in sync with them. It allows us to understand their motivations and also the reasons behind certain decisions that they make. It allows us to know really what truly matters to them so that we can make sure that we give our very best advice, the guidance and service that they are asking of us. As advisors, as practitioners, we have a great responsibility to each and every one of our clients that we do not take for granted. So you guys can get to know me a little bit better. I figured I'd share with you guys what my financial whys are and the reasons behind why I do what I do. Now, I didn't grow up thinking that I wanted to be a financial advisor or financial planner. Um, I don't think most kids do, um, even today, right? I mean, it's, it's not a quote unquote sexy profession, right? There's no cool shows about us. It's not like uh, ER or a medical profession where there's great shows about them. I mean, I guess you could say we have some cool shows like the Wolf of Wall Street, but that's that's a movie and that's not about financial advisors. That's more like stockbrokers or maybe Ozark. That's about financial planners, but that's exactly not what we do. So never mind. Scratch that. In fact, actually, as a kid growing up, I, I used to love drawing and I had always dreamt of being an animator uh, for Disney. Uh, but that's definitely a story for a different time. But, you know, with that said, I, I like to believe that the wealth management profession actually chose me, which is where I had my first encounter and first taste of my financial why uh, when I was a young adult in my first year of college. At that point, 
you know, 18, I was very irresponsible with money. I guess who at 18 wouldn't be, right? Or at least I like to think that. Growing up, I wasn't taught how to manage money. I don't think most kids are taught either how to manage money. I think most parents believe that we're taught how to manage money through school. And school thinks that most families teach kids how to manage money. So there's this disconnect. But again, at that age, wasn't taught how to manage money, let alone how to balance a checkbook. But one of the weirdest things was that at 16, I had my first job as a backstalker at Target. And I had just earned enough to pay for my little Honda Civic loan. But for some reason, when I got to college, it just went downhill. Maybe because at 18, that's when I had my very first debit card and had some free money in the bank, aka student loan money. And I think for any kid that at 18 with free student loan money thinks that that's always going to be there. So because of the irresponsibility that I had at that age, not tracking what I spent versus what I had in the bank, I incurred a lot of debt in overdraft fees. So much so that it just took me a long time to recover from that and a lot of self-awareness and self-education and how to recover from those bad financial decisions. But I believe it happened for a reason, and it taught me a lot of life lessons. Now, for the last so many years, I track all of my spending, and I know exactly where every single dime goes because I never want to feel that way again. Uh, I never want to feel vulnerable and and helpless like I did when I was 18, um, helpless financially. And I believe that having a lot of that self-awareness and that experience is what I take in helping my clients, especially when it comes to situations where they need help with budgeting or or cash flow scenarios, for example. So yeah, it's pretty ironic that I had those money issues when I was young and and now I do what I do in helping other people uh, manage their money. It's kind of funny, I'm just thinking about it, but again, I think everything happens for a reason and I think that's one of the main reasons why this profession um, has chosen me. My second occurrence with my financial why uh, was with one of my very early clients at my previous firm. See, she came to me for the first time in need of desperate help. Um, Unfortunately, she had just lost her husband of many years. And unfortunately, this is a scenario that I've incurred um, a lot of times um, where the husband is the main breadwinner. And in this case, that was her scenario. And he took care of all of their household finances during their entire marriage. And she just trusted that she wouldn't have to get involved in their finances because he was always there to take care of it for them. But now that she had just lost him, she felt lost not just for the loss of, of course, her husband, but also for the first time in a very long time, she had to deal with the financial situations in her life by herself. And I could just immediately tell how overwhelmed and how stressed and how alone she felt when I first met her. I knew that my reason that day for showing up to work was to help her, to be able to guide her and let her know that someday soon that she would be okay through the planning and everything that we would do over time for her. Like I said, unfortunately, I've met many of my uh, women clients in this very similar situation. However, I think because of it, It has allowed me the privilege to make such a big difference in their lives. And I know that these experiences is another reason why I sit down with my wife. Um, We try to do this at least once a year and we go through our financial plan together because obviously I'm the one that takes care of our finances, but I would never want her to have to go through what I saw many times. Um, A lot of my women clients have to go through Um, you know, when they lost their husbands who were the main person that took care of their finances. And I think it's because of those interactions, I believe that having a plan in place is very important where it can help minimize a lot of that stress that we can leave on to our loved ones. I believe having a plan is just so important, whether that is a financial plan, an estate plan, or even a family plan. Not a cell phone plan, by the way, but one where The family is on the same page and knows exactly what are the goals and the importances of the entire family unit. So everyone's on the same page. I believe that having a plan really affords us the opportunities to enjoy life in today's moment. Because again, by having things already planned out, by having things in a way taken care of, it it gives us peace of mind 
and it allows us to enjoy the fruits of our labor and what's going on today so we're not worrying or having some some type of stress in the back of our mind and i just truly believe that there's a lot of people out there who need a plan in their life but just don't know where to go how to start or honestly what's what's the best for their personal situation there's just so much information out there it's very difficult for individuals to to decipher and that's where i think again just having a solid plan is very important for a lot of people now the third occurrence that has defined my financial why uh, happened more recently a few years ago actually and it's probably one of my favorite stories to tell uh, although not many people know it so after today everyone's gonna know it um, but the scenario was i was with my previous firm at this point for about 10 plus years and my financial practice was doing extremely well. Um, I would say too well to a point where they felt like things were just on autopilot. Um, I had just completed my very best month of my career, you know, from a paycheck standpoint, right? Made the most money ever made in that one single month. And I think for anyone else in, in my shoes or in my profession, they would have been very ecstatic. Um, but to me, it felt very much the opposite. Um, I felt quite empty and had a moment where I questioned even if I wanted to be a financial advisor. And so I had broken this news to my wife and I'll, I'll share how I did that. So, and this is my favorite part about it, it cringe, cringeworthy, but it was our seven year wedding anniversary and I had made reservations at this restaurant. At the time, we lived in Irvine, and I didn't do my homework. I didn't do a Yelp review or, or take a look at the place. I thought it was an Italian place. It's in Irvine. It's got to be great, right? So my wife dressed up like normally, beautifully, makeup, everything all done. Myself, I think I had a, a coat jacket on, some slacks, maybe even a tie, and, you know, we were dressed up to celebrate our seven year wedding anniversary. And when we showed up to the restaurant and, and got inside, literally, I felt like my body just uh, just died. Because it's not it was not a place where you go to celebrate a wedding anniversary. There were booths everywhere. And I'm not talking about the boots that you see at Mastro's the really nice ones. These are like Benny's boots. And there were kids running around. There were people dressed in shorts and flip-flops. And here, me and my wife are dressed, decked out, right, to the nines, celebrating our wedding anniversary. So I already knew at that point, man, I just wanted to escape. But my wife was a, a trooper, and we sat down and, and had dinner. And during dinner, I, I, I told her, you know, I'm not sure if I want to do this. And I probably should have chosen better words because she was like, do what? And I was like, no, 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 not, I don't mean, I don't think I can do us. I don't think I can do my job anymore. And she was like, what are you talking about? You know, you are great at what you do. You've been doing this for such a long time. I don't understand, you know, what you're talking about. And I told her, I just felt a bit of emptiness and, and we talked about it that evening for some time and, and after that that conversation with my wife I had a eye-opening experience with a, a prospect about a week later and I decided during this prospect meeting that I was going to give myself a chance and change my mindset to see if maybe this was just a temporary funk that I was going through or if it was something uh, much deeper than that and during that initial meeting, I just had a weird out-of-body experience where I felt like I was the third party looking in on that meeting. And I literally could see myself in that meeting with that customer. And I could just see how receptive these customers were to the advice that I was giving them and how much they appreciated the time and the effort that I was putting into the meeting in getting to know them and to understand their story. And I would say that after that meeting and reflecting on that meeting and that experience and the conversation with my wife and just taking more time to reflect, um, I had become aware that, you know, thankfully I have this gift for what I'm able to do. 
and people need my help. My wife, she's so great in, in putting things into, how would you say, things that I can understand. She said, you know, for most of us, when we think about money and finances, we just look at it, we just see it all as a haze where everything is just jumbled up and we can't make left from right. She said, that's most people. Uh, but for you, you know, you see everything so clearly. There's no haze. You know exactly what to do. You know how things work. You know how to help people. And at that point, with all of those things that I was analyzing and taking in, I realized that the reason why I felt that emptiness several weeks prior, despite having my biggest pay month ever, was because I was no longer happy where I was at in my career. It wasn't about the money that I made because I felt that my passion for my career and what I loved to do had faded away over time. I was definitely grateful for the opportunity and the experiences that I had in my previous firm, but at that point, it just opened my eyes and dawned on me that it was time for me to go independent and build a firm that I could be proud of and be passionate about and help my clients the way that I believed they should be helped that I felt I couldn't do previously. This began the start of my path towards what I hope will be the next 20 plus years in my career, doing something that I am absolutely passionate about. I'm so grateful that I get to do this each and every day, helping people that I deeply care for. I absolutely love what I do. And I love that I get to wake up every single day and sit down with my clients and just connect with people and build these great relationships. Uh, for me, I would say that the relationships that I have with my clients is the most rewarding part of my career. And I know that people come to me for financial guidance and advice, but I feel personally over the years that I've learned a lot from my clients as well and our relationships um, just about life. And that's just something very valuable that you can't put a price on. For me, the biggest thing is that having the opportunity to serve my clients who trust me with something that is really raw, that's, that's personal, emotional, and really private, that's a privilege and that's a great responsibility that I'm honored to have but take very seriously. I feel that if I can just make my clients' lives uh, a bit better than before they met me and also more stress-free and empower them to feel confident in their financial decisions that we make, then that makes my job so much more fulfilling and makes me happy. When my clients tell me that they trust me, it's the greatest compliment that I can receive. I would say that Maven Bridge Capital would not exist, of course, if it were not for my clients. This is as much their company as it is mine, and for that I am truly, truly grateful for. I'm super excited to start this journey with you guys, and I hope you guys know me a little bit more after today. Um, I look forward to hearing any feedback that you guys may have for me, whether that's negative, positive, negative again. I love it, right? It's how I can learn. I definitely want to be able to do this for a while, and if there's ways that I can improve and, and you guys tell me how I can do that and continue to deliver great content, then I'm all ears. For more information about Maven Bridge Capital, you guys can go ahead and visit us on our website, which is mavenbridgecapital.com, or click on the link in the show notes. And you guys can also follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, I'm super excited because in our next episode, we're going to have our very first guests talk about their success story. They're going to share how they came to be, what they had to overcome, I'm going to share some very important insight and tips and advice that you guys should be able to take away and use and apply to your own life, or hopefully, again, pass on to someone that you know who can benefit from it. Because remember, success is defined by how we use what we have learned in life to help others. Till then, thank you guys for listening to Succession, hosted by Maven Bridge Capital, where the goal of this podcast is to pay success forward. Thank you guys so much. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, evening. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Securities offered through Kestra Investment Services, 
LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, investment advisory services offered through Kestra Private Wealth Services, LLC, an affiliate of Kestra is. Maven Bridge Capital and Kestra Investment Services are not affiliated. Kestra is and Kestra is do not provide tax or legal advice. The opinions expressed in this commentary are those of the author and may not necessarily reflect those held by Kestra Investment Services. LLC or Kestra Advisory Services, LLC. This is for general information only and is not intended to provide specific investment advice or recommendations for any individual. It is suggested that you consult your financial professional, attorney, or tax advisor with regard to your individual situation. Comments concerning the past performance are not intended to be forward-looking and should not be viewed as an indication of future results.